Hi, welcome to Brian Sews. Today I'm doing a video on making the Weibacher Razorback tank top that I've been working on lately. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to show from start to finish the entire process. So we start here in the cutting room. Um, got my pattern here. This is a pattern that I drafted on Wild Ginger. I've also made this available for you to download if you'd like to try it out yourself. Um, I'm using this red and white striped. This is a, feels like a cotton, cotton lycra blend. It's a rib knit and it has stretch in both directions. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure the fabric is squared up. Really, I could use less. I'll use a little bit less of this. This is probably a dollar or two dollar a yard fabric I got picked up at Walmart years ago. Let's see, 12 and a half inches there, 12 and a half, just about 12 and a half inches there. So that looks pretty square as far as the grain goes. Now, oftentimes I found with knits. With this knit, the color is woven, is, is knit directly in. But with a printed knit, many times the print will not be printed straight on the knit or like straight on the grain. And in that case, you kind of have to determine whether the print is important enough to cut slightly off grain or whether you're just going to go with perfectly on grain. If you get too far off grain, you'll end up with one of those situations where your tank top or your shirt or whatever will will twist as you know as you put it on, and the side seams won't go straight down the body. Um, what I'm doing now is I kind of need to make sure that my stripes are for the most part lined up, and this is a little tricky because the selvage maybe not easy for you to see in the video when as the stripes get close to the selvage they're kind of veering up to the right here or the top of the screen so i'm trying to line up the main body of the stripe down here and ignore that the that it's going off here at the top i'm not going to use that part the selvages and nits are usually pretty pretty weird So we'll place our pattern. I'm going to slide this down just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit more. Move my table up so I'm not in the way here. And when I'm doing these tank tops, I'm going to be lining up the side seam. And I found it's best if I'm lining up the side that I the only part I'm really worried about is making sure that I cut knowing where the bottom hem is going to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the bottom hem here with one of these red stripes. So I know when I cut my other piece, if I line up the bottom with one of those red stripes, then I can pretty much match the stripes almost all the way up. And we'll see how well, we'll see how well I do with that. Okay. Like that. And because this fabric has stretch in both directions, you can kind of fudge it a little bit as you're sewing. You can you can kind of stretch it around just a little bit and it won't really make any difference. All right, that looks good. And let me grab my electric scissors real quick. Generally, it's easier when you're cutting out um, a knit to leave the pattern edges on and cut the paper and the pattern together at the same time. But since I've been using, I've used this pattern probably, oh, probably six or seven times at this point, I'm going to have to cut around the edges.
part that's really crucial when cutting this is to not make the, str the uh, straps here, the shoulder area, too thin. You want to be sure that they don't get skinnier as you cut them. They can't get, there's not much, not much room for air on those. I'm going to just move around here so I have a better position. Keep this smooth. Notice that I pulse the cutters as I go around a curve. That's to kind of slow the blades down just a little bit to give it a little bit more resistance. Um, when you're operating these electric scissors at full speed, it they're almost they're almost too sharp, and you don't have as much control. There we go. So this is this is a great example of how electric scissors are just awesome. This knit has a lot of spandex or lycra in it. And this is the kind of thing that if you were to cut this with your rotary cutter, and I don't know if you can't see this, but I, I cut, I've started to cut with my rotary cutter. When I do use the rotary, I cut directly on top of my plastic table now. Um, and it works just fine. The table, it's just fine. You know, it was like, what are these tables, 60 bucks or something? And I have the whole surface to cut with. But when you're cutting um, something with a lot of lycra, you're, unless you've got the sharpest of blades and the best cutting mat, you're going to have a lot of those little, those little elastic fibers hanging on, and you're going to have to go back and recut quite a bit. These electric scissors just sail right through it. So I'll put that piece there. Put this here, and let's pull this up for our next section. And I'm going to. Make sure this is lined up again. Some crease marks from the hanger. So it's so 12 inches there. So 12 inches there. I'm just verifying that my Stripes are fairly lined up. Oftentimes when you get these discount knits, especially with stripes and stuff like this, they will be a little weird. It's you'll just have to work it out. But you paid a dollar a yard for it, so who's to complain? Not me. Line this up, and remember, I'm lining up the bottom hem with one of the red stripes. So we've got that there. Line up my edge here. Place my pattern weights. And here we go. So what has I'm doing this, I'm using my thumb on the cutter. I put my thumb here on the side of the cutter and allow my fingers to run along the pattern. This kind of helps to stabilize so I don't have to worry about just using my right hand with the cutter in it to do the, to do the steering. shoulder strap area not to make it too thin. What I'm 
doing in this place is I'm actually holding the paper down to make sure. It's the right size. And just zip off the end. And there we go. Like I said in the video where I talk about these, it takes practice to get used to using the electric scissors, but once you do, I'm telling you, you won't go back to that rotary. I am about to use the rotary, and I'll show you what, well, I'll show you a few things. The first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting the binding, and binding is something that you want nice, precise pieces, and I find that it's just real easy to use the rotary for something like that. So, let's just get this fabric out of the way. I just cleaned this room up, so I'm trying to keep it neat at least for a little while. You notice I keep my fabric on hangers, it makes it very simple to categorize and put back where it belongs. Also makes it super easy to find exactly what you're looking for. Okay, for this for this fabric, I need to choose my binding, and I could choose I have I could choose an orange or a white. That would be very standard. Um, I'm actually thinking what might be more interesting. What I do is I keep my binding pieces. What I what the, this is the fabric that I use for binding. I'll usually keep it on its own hanger, so it's all kind of together here. Um, and I could use, some of these are rayon knits, some of them are just poly knits, some of them have spandex, some of them don't. I could use a green, which would be really interesting. I'm thinking this gray might be the best. That actually looks like a great combination, gray and the white and orange stripe. So I'm going to use that. I've been using it so much lately that there's not much left. And what I do is keep this folded really nicely. Make sure all the edges are together. As much as possible there. And what I'll do is, as I've, I've used this gray quite a few times now to cut these bindings, and I've noticed that I've started to get slightly off, like my, I'm not quite right on grain. So what I'm going to do is, for the first part here, is I'm going to slice off where I'm off, so that way I can start clean. So you notice this is a spot where I do use the rotary cutter. Um, the binding is an inch and a half. So I'll place my straight edge here at an inch and a half mark, and I will cut three strips of binding, one for the neck and each armhole. I do end up with extra binding, and that's okay. This fabric was probably $4 a yard, and it has supplied me with the bindings for at least six or seven tank tops so far, and I've still got I'd say there's at least three more tank tops left in here. Okay, we're about to start sewing our Y-back or Razorback tank top. What we're going to do first is we need to determine what the right and wrong side of our fabric is. I'm going to go down to this bottom hem and I'm going to give it a little stretch. And we see that it's rolling to this side, which means this is the right side. First thing I usually do is sew the shoulder seams, which is this one. Do the same thing to the other piece here. Okay, it's indicating that this is the right side here. You have to be very careful when you're working with these really skinny shoulder straps. With this, it's a, this is pretty hardy fabric, but some of these knits are very delicate and they stretch out of shape really super easy. 
So what I'm doing here, so you'll notice that I'm as I'm lining this up, I'm offsetting. What I want to line up is not just the top edge here. You see there's this little triangle sticking out on this side and the same thing on the other side. What I'm lining up is where the actual stitches are going to go. I'm going to be using a four thread serger, serging stitch for this. You could just as easily sew the, the step on a regular sewing machine, no problem. Um, need any serger tails on this step so I'm going to cut them off all the way. Ideally what you want when you after you show the sew the shoulder strap is that you shouldn't have any like that it should go that should be a perfectly smooth transition here on the sides and that looks pretty good. So let's do the next one. Being sure that we're maintaining our right sides together and we're not twisting a lot of strap here, so you don't want to twist it out of shape. Twisted shoulder strap's not going to do you any good. So again, I'm going to offset like that. See that? Because my stitching is going to initially fall here, not all the way here at the top. So that's why I'm concerned with that. See how I did on that one. And again, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we need to do our side seams. And again, making sure there's no twisting here, keeping right sides together. And I've been in the habit of starting my side seam at the bottom. And I'm lining up my stripes here and it's okay if it's slightly off on the bottom hem like I'm not see there's a little bit of white here where maybe because I I've, see on the back one or the front I'm not sure which one this is uh, the orange stripe is all the way at the bottom here the white stripe is a little bit at the bottom we'll take care of that when we put the when we hem it we'll just make sure that's evened out something like this is not going to make that much difference that could have been a fault of my cutting, it could have been a fault of the fabric. You know, you can obsess over these things, but really it's best just to just sew it up. So I'm looking at the edge here to make sure my stripes continue to stay matched up. I'm surging this, you can see I'm only cutting off a little whisper of the edge. As we get here to the top, I will line this up. And see here, because of the way the pieces are lined up, it's not going to meet up exactly here. So what I'll do is I'm going to sew this so the edges stay lined up. And I'll trim. I'll show you what I'm going to do here. You can see right here, this edge didn't stay lined up exactly with the top, but the stripes. Oh, well, they should have been more lined up. <laughs> the stripes are fairly lined up. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to trim off this little corner right here before I put the binding on, and that'll work out fine. It's almost it's it's really hard with a shaped side seam like this has to get the stripes to line up exactly the same all the way up. It's not a it's not a square box, so you do the best you can, and usually at the end of the seam, 
is where you'll you'll start to become unaligned and I'd much rather have that be under the arm than at the bottom side seam where people will notice it more. top again and you can see my edges the top edges don't line up but we're gonna go with the stripes here because that's what's most important here is you can see there's a going to be a corner sticking out so what we'll do is simply trim the corner off just like that super easy no problem same thing on the other side got this corner just even it out Just like that. Looks perfect now. Okay, that's it for the surging. Let's move on to the sewing the binding on. Okay, we're over at the sewing machine. Um, first thing we're going to do is move our needle all the way over to the left. Now I say we, I mean this is this is my binding technique. Other people might do exactly the same thing, but I've just determined, I've just figured this out on my own. And you know, there may be better ways to do it, and I'm sure after I post this, people will certainly let me know if they have other tips or suggestions. But I've determined that this works really well, it gives me some good accuracy, and is quick and easy to do. Um, what I'm doing first is I've got selvages on these strips, so I'm going to cut the selvages off first. We don't really want to deal with that. Determine the right and wrong side of my binding strip and put it right sides together with my tank top. I usually do the arms first and then the neck, but you could do it in the order you want, really. And I'm gonna do this using the sewing machine foot as my guide. That does make it easy. Keep everything lined up. So I'm going to be applying this binding, especially to the neck, or sorry, excuse me, to the armholes with no tension at all. And I'm going to make sure that my tank top body is not being stretched either. I'm just going to keep moving it around as we go around the curves. Of 
for all intents and purposes, what you're doing right now is just basting. Um, you could use a longer stitch length, which would make the sewing on faster. But it also makes it so the basting is a lot weaker. And it's, it, you, you're, I'm going to cover stitch this binding on anyway in the next step, but I don't mind that the basting stays intact. I used to worry about what direction my surged seam on the inside here was facing. Now I don't care anymore. It doesn't really matter. You can go frontwards or backwards or whatever happens to be easier on that particular that particular seam. So as we get to the spot where we've got where we're coming up to our start point, going to overlap. And I would say I'm gonna overlap three quarters of an inch or so. Um, cut your threads off nice and short here, you don't need those. And cut off your excess binding. So you can see for the armhole, I have I have this much binding left. This might be enough to do the other armhole or might be enough to do the neck. I never really want to risk it. I don't really want to run out of binding at the very end. Um, I, think it's, it, this, I think I have done the, the neck with this amount, but it's just, for me, I'm just lazy and I'd like to just have a fresh, big, long piece for each piece I'm doing. Um, something I just figured out uh, the other day when I was doing this, if you tack this, these edges together, so this is where my transition is, if I just put this in the machine and sew, let's say about a quarter inch or so away from the edge, and basically sew my binding together here, like this, so now it's sewn, it's basically basted here at the top so these two pieces aren't coming apart, that will make the cover stitching much easier, and you'll see why in the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to bind the rest of these holes here. And maybe I'll speed up the video so you don't have to sit through the whole thing. So it is a little tedious. It's taking me a little extra time too, having the work around the camera here in front of me. Okay. Again, we'll do the same thing we did before. We'll cut off our selvage end. Determine the right side of the binding. That goes down. Um, I've also figured out not to start the binding. It's very tempting to start the binding right at the side seam. Don't do it. It ends up, you'll end up creating just too much bulk in that little area right under the arm. And especially with the design of this tank top, there's not really enough fabric behind your arm at your back to pull that tight if there's extra weight or bulk there. So start it just an inch or two up or down and you'll be fine. Again, as I get to the end here, I'm going to overlap the binding about three quarters of an inch. Trim my thread tails nice and close. Trim off the excess binding here. And then baste the edges together up here.
that won't show. See, as we turn this, as we turn this binding under, that stitching won't show on the outside if we do it this way. If you get all your thread tails now as you're sewing it, you won't have any of those to worry about later. Now the neck opening is a little bit different. Um, I've determined the best spot to start the neck is if this is the Y back right here. So this is the, the center back is, is this spot right here. We don't want to do it right in the very center back because first of all, that's a focal point. And second of all, we don't want any extra bulk in that area. Um, so I've determined the best spot to start it, if you don't want to start it in the front, is to start it, I'm going to trim off my selvage now, is to start the binding basically a few inches down, kind of some, somewhere between the center back right here and the shoulder seam, which lays up here. Determine the right side of our binding, and we'll start applying it. Here. This seems to be the most inconspicuous spot. There's not, there isn't a lot of inconspicuous spots really on something like this, but this seems to be the the most. So I'm going slow here because what I'd like to do is, as I reach the the center back here, the this is the, applying the neck binding is a little different from the armhole binding in that I'm going to be applying a slight bit of tension to the binding. And we're not talking about stretching it way out of shape. We're just giving it a little extra stretch as we go around both the center back and the center front. This is going to keep these areas from gapping. I don't know if you've ever made a t-shirt and you've tried it on and the neckline sags and gaps down. And that often is because you didn't apply a little bit of tension to the binding as you put it on. In just those areas, if you apply too much tension, you'll actually bring the neckline up. Or even worse, if it's way too much tension, you'll end up kind of gathering, gathering the neck in and you'll get puckers. Neither one of those things are really desirable. As we're going through this very skinny area here, I'm being sure that my seam allowance with my other binding is tucked to the other side, so I'm not going to sew over that right now. I want to be sure that, that does not get in the way. There's a very small tolerance here. This little strip of fabric, will there will only be maybe a quarter inch of that showing after we get the binding on both sides here. And I'll show you that here in a second. Slow down through here. I don't have my center front marked, but I know that it's basically right in this section here. So I'm going to give my binding just a little bit of tension. Just enough to give me a nice shape around the front, keep the neckline close to the body. Something you get with practice. Practice, I think. I don't think um, it's hard to, de hard to really describe exactly how much tension that is that you'd give it. And once I reach the other side, I'm going to start applying with no tension again. So you see what I'm doing is I'm spreading my binding away here to make sure I'm not going to get anything in the way. Don't want to sew. This binding to the other one or the other seam allowance on the other side. Overlap about three quarters of an inch. Cut your thread tails nice and short. Cut the previous thread tail short. Cut 
cut off the excess binding. Again, we will baste the two edges together. So this is what I was saying, where there's not there's not too much fabric in between here. So really be careful as you go over the shoulders. Um, all right, so let's move over to the cover stitch machine. Cover stitch this up. Okay, so the last step in our tank top process is applying the cover stitching here. It doesn't matter which one you start on; they're all pretty much the same. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling the edge all the way around and it should look about this wide. I always seem to start where the transition is there. I find on this particular machine, which is a little odd, that if I'm going to get skip stitches, it's usually where it's thicker. And that might be a tension issue. Um, the machine I have is very finicky, and it's not as easy to adjust tension maybe on than some of the newer. I mean, it's easy to adjust the tension. It's not as easy to get it right. So um, I start I start with the transition of the, 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 where the beginning and the end of the binding is, so that if I do get skip stitches, I'm going to be going over that area again anyway. So... You can hear the machine sounds a little, uh, uh, I guess it's the belt that makes it sound like that. It sounds like a rubber band. And I simply, just simply folding the binding around the seam allowance. And trying to cover stitch right down the center. This is actually the easiest and probably most fun part of putting these together. If you didn't have a cover stitch machine, you could use a variety of stitches on your sewing machine. So I'm going to, after I finish doing this, I'm going to go and make up some samples and show you some other stitches you might be able to, you might be able to have on your machine to do the same kind of thing with. You won't get the same effect, obviously, because it's not a cover stitch, but it's better than nothing at all, right? I found it's best to take your time when you're doing this binding part, especially if you are using a cover stitch machine. Because as you know, if you have a cover stitch machine, it's not really friendly to take these stitches out. They don't like coming out. So, just take your time and try to be even about what you're doing. When you get to these thin parts here, be sure that your seam allowance from the other side is well out of the way. You don't want that getting caught up in there. And see, you can. We're starting to get to the point where you can see. This is why I let me trim off these extra threads now. Like we said, trimming these now avoids trimming them later. Um, this is why basting the end, the the start and the finish of the binding together is so much easier because this is now secure. So I don't have to worry about trying to fold that under. Um, and get it under this cover stitch foot. Oh, I can see I'm starting to have a little bubble here. We'll see if that... So just going to overlap a little bit, 
pull my needle threads out, pull through, cut from the back as close as I can. Everything should, that's weird, there we go. So let's see where that bubble was. See, I saw it as I was sewing. I saw, you can see right here, this thicker bubble spot that popped out. What I'm looking for on this side is, yep, see I missed, missed the binding right here, and this is right as we went over the surged area. So what I'll probably do is take out, the, the right thing to do really would be to take out um, these stitches and yeah, what happened was that edge got caught on the surged spot there. The right thing to do would be to take those stitches out and redo them in that area. Okay, now we've got all those stitches removed in that area here where we had the binding slip out. We'll tuck it back in. And we'll simply overlap about, I'll go back about an inch usually on something like this. And simply sew it again. extra threads here. See, looks just fine. You have a little bit of a overlap here, a little extra overlap here. The back will look a little bit worse for wear, but really not bad once you cut your, cut your extra threads away. Um, so like I said, with <laughs> the cover stitch, it's best to get it, get it right the first time. Um, all right, let's do, let's find our next. Right here where the binding's coming together. Tuck that under. Tuck it under here. We're ready to go. Because I'm using the seam allowance as my guide for how much to fold the binding under, you see why the seam allowance when you sew it, when you baste it on, is important, which is why I move the needle all the way to the left when I'm using the, the right side of the foot as a guide. Um, you can make a much skinnier or much wider binding, I suppose. I think this looks the most functional to me. And I've determined that if I use the seam allowances, probably this looks like about this looks like about a half inch. I have my rulers not handy. If it was, I would measure it for you. Um, but it allows when you use that inch and a half binding with it, it allows the binding to fold all the way under and mostly get, let's see, mostly get caught, see, it's getting caught, the edge is getting caught by the cover stitching. And you can actually see right here, this is the original basting stitch. So we're in a little a little ways from that. So the basting stitch will still be visible on the inside. If you'd like, you could match your bobbin thread to your fabric to make it less visible. Um, so I'm not sure if that really matters or not. Doesn't really matter to me. I suppose if this was something you were selling, you'd want that to be as invisible as possible, or even figure out a way you could put this, put the initial binding on without basting it first. It's probably not the most professional look, but it certainly is easy. Overlap about an inch here. Cut 
put the back threads off as close as we can get to the fabric. The front ones should pull through. Have some extra threads here to cut off. Okay, a few more threads to cut off. And now we got the neck binding to do. Oh wait, that, that was the neck binding. Now we've got the last arm to do, I guess. All right. Got an extra thread poking out here. Get rid of that. Here we'll want to cut these. This is where we started. We'll cut these threads off now to make sure they're out of the way. Cut the one off underneath as well. Just make it a lot easier. We're not trying to cut those off through the overlap stitches. Overlap about an inch or so. Pull our needle threads out. Trim off as close as we can to the back. Make sure there's no extra threads here. Okay, that looks great. So next we need to do is we need to hem the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off my serger tails from that if they weren't already trimmed and determine how much we're going to fold this up and what line we're going to use. I think we're going to fold it up to this red line here, red stripe, like this. So that's what I'm going to use as my guide. Um, seems like I just have a little bit of extra white right here on this one. So what I could do is take the scissors and trim off the excess now just to keep it this is hard to do with the camera in front of me just to keep it out of the way and from getting confusing as I turn this under everything else looks pretty good there's a little excess here too that's fine so 
what we'll be doing is we're going to be cover stitching this from the front and I'm going to be using this red stripe here as my guide. Let's just drop the foot and see where, since we can't actually see, this is the edge right here and that looks just about perfect. So, and this also is going to mean that my white needle threads are going to fall in the white stripe and I think that should look pretty good. I always start on the, on the uh, side seam, I don't know for some reason. Just try to be as accurate as you can going around here. It's really, this is one of those things that's hard to get used to because you can't really see what you're stitching underneath. You just have to keep your fabric all up on the table so you don't have anything dragging you down. So as I get close to the starting point, I'm going to trim off the excess threads to make sure those are not going to be overlapped and in my way. Overlap about an inch. Okay, so now we've got some samples of some of the same knits I was just using. And we're going to try applying these. This will be an experiment on my part too. Applying these with a standard sewing machine and no cover stitch. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably do the same basting here. Get my binding basted onto the openings. Of course, this is just a long straight piece of knit, so there's no opening or curves, which makes it a little easier. as I have. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is why don't we start here at the top with, so we'll be folding it over exactly the same way. If we're doing exactly the same technique, we're just going to use a different machine to create the stitches. And why don't we use, I'm going to line it up right with the center of my foot. Let's get this folded under here. Right with the center of the foot. Um, why don't we start with the basic zigzag? Everyone's going to have a zigzag on their machine. Most everyone's going to have a zigzag. If you're using a straight stitch only, I don't know that you... I'm sure there's ways, if I say you can't do stretch fabric, I'm sure there's people who sew stretch all the time with a straight straight stitch machine. 
Um, if, if you had a straight stitch machine, you may have to sew it multiple times because some of your stitches will pop. In fact, I, I, don't, I wouldn't suggest doing a, sewing on, on a binding with just a straight stitch. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try a little of this little zigzag stitch at whatever the basic setting is, which is, it looks like a three millimeter uh, stitch width. Then I'm going to change that up. This machine does a six millimeter as a maximum stitch width. I'm going to change that up to a six millimeter here. Try that out. Um, why don't we try a multi-step? Multi-step zigzag. This is also coming up at six millimeters. And looks like I'll need to change my. Oh, that's as that's as long as this gets. So multi-step is going to be putting in a lot of stitches here. One of the issues that you can have with putting in too many stitches is that it'll actually kind of stretch out the knit, and that's not really preferable. Alright, so let's try some of the stretch stitches a machine does. See how those turn out. Again, that looks like a lot of stitches, so I'm going to try stretching this one out a little bit. Yeah, that seems better. Um, let's see what else we have here. A lot of your decorative stitches are quite stretchy as well. Um, you just have to be aware that if they're stitch heavy, it it will kind of cause things to stretch out. Let's try this one here. This is a actually sold as a stretch stitch. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, so the first section we have here, this is just standard zigzag, and it's, it's I'm going to pop the, the basting stitches underneath so that we can see how much stretch it has, and that one has pretty good stretch, and looks, it's okay, looks, it looks decent, um, I think if you were to match your thread color or use the, you know, thread color specifically to highlight the stitching, then it might be a little bit better. This is the same zigzag stitch, I'm going to pop the basting stitches so it's stretchy, this is the same zigzag, just wider. And you can see you're starting to get a little, a little tunneling effect with the wider zigzag. The next section we have, this is, um, I kind of like, this one looks pretty nice on the back. This is your, you can pop the basting, but this is your multi-step zigzag. And that's got quite a bit of stretch to it. Doesn't look like it, you know, the way you can tell is if, if, if you have too many stitches in there, if you pull this out, and you let it go back and it looks saggy or loose, then the stitches themselves are taking up too much space in your in your knit. Um, this is a standard stretch stitch. Um, let's pop the basting in and see how it works. It's got some decent, it's got good stretch to it. That's, you know, sturdy. The back side looks decent. Um, this is the same one uh, elongated, which I think I would probably use something like this. This looks a, like a lot less uh, thread and looks decent on the back. Here you can see I hadn't, I didn't fold my binding over quite far enough, so only a little bit of the stitching got caught. Um, this is another stretch stitch that you might recognize on your machine and looks pretty good and stretchy. 
back side again, I'm not folding my binding over enough here because I'm being lazy. And this is an actual stretch, straight stitch. So you can see it has a good stretch to it, good recovery. Um, that looks really pretty good. On the back, as long as you were catching the edge of your binding, which I did until I got to, actually maybe, yeah, I missed it right here. So I missed the binding right here. Um, so as long as you're folding your binding under enough and you're catching the edge, this is this looks pretty good. You could use a, a nice contrasting, like if I was to actually be using this stitch, maybe I would use a white or an orange to show up. Um, and that works out just fine too. So you don't have to have a cover stitch machine or a serger to do this Y-back tank top. You can use your standard sewing machine and the, the least I would suggest having is a zigzag stitch, but most, um, most, even the most basic manual, you know, sewing machines these days, you know, a $60, $75 sewing machine will have at least a few of these stretch stitches that you can try using. So there you have it. Our Y-back tank top is finished. These should take you 30 to 45 minutes to complete. I think the hardest part is probably practicing putting the binding on. And besides that, that's all there is to it. Like we showed you, or like I showed you, there was, uh, I did use a serger and cover stitch machine in doing this tank top, but you don't have to. You can use a standard sewing machine to do every single step of this process. So get to it, print out your pattern, make your own Y back or razor back tank top, send me some pictures.